Scientists have discovered that there is evidence of planets outside of the Milky Way galaxy. Opening it up even further to us. <laughs> exactly. So researchers in the University of Oklahoma have actually discovered evidence for that supports the first planets outside of the Milky Way, outside of the galaxy. Which seems like it would be impossible considering our capabilities with lenses and Right, and, and it's something they're not actually going to be able to observe anytime soon. It's mm -hmm. not due to a limitation. You know, we, we have um, wonderful uh, tools to our disposal for planets that are at a much closer distance, but anything past uh, several hundred light years away, it's very hard. So normally to discover planets, we have uh, a few different ways of doing that, right? There's the transit method, which basically means when a planet passes in front of a star, it dims its light a little bit. So that's kind of how we determine that there is a planet crossing through. Um, and then we have the radial um, velocity, which is like a wobble method. If a star wobbles a little bit, it is due to the gravitational pull of this other planet. Mm -hmm. And those are the two ways that we've been discovering um, exoplanets outside of our solar system as well. Since I think 1992, 1995, depending on who you're kind of, what sources you're checking. Um, but it's uh, this is the first time that they are able to use different tools, which is um, kind of micro lensing. So what is happening is that they are um, looking at the way gravity affects light coming from a star. Mm -hmm. And it effectively works as a lens, almost like a microscope. So you're getting to see the light from a different uh, place that is very there far we go. away. Exactly. So um, yeah, with this, we are we we can use our knowledge of larger objects, larger, more massive objects, bend the light in order to see this galaxy, which is 3.8 billion light years away and not possible for us <laughs> to observe directly. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's this method. Yeah, yeah, to it's, it's indirectly observe it. And they discovered over 2,000 uh, different uh, planets kind of in this area. And one of the interesting things about them is that they are not orbiting around a star the way ours, you know, orbit around the sun, mm -hmm. they're kind of free floating. They're roaming around in between different stars. So their orbits don't follow the same patterns that ours do. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I mean, this is, what's interesting is like the science is really cool, even if we can't actually observe it. Mm -hmm. Because this is something that was predicted, you know, Einstein predicted it when he did his general theory of relativity. And he was like micro lensing the idea of being able to magnify this light because gravity around celestial objects works in that way and can bend light and magnify it mm -hmm. is really exciting. Yeah, and maybe one day we'll be able to observe it in a different way. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, you know the tools keep developing. Not anytime soon. Kepler's not going to suddenly like get pictures of this. But um, <laughs> at the same time, like this is what pushes science, right? This is what's so exciting. And then you develop the new tools, and you get people interested, and you get them curious. And then movies will come out, and sci-fi stories will be made of these planets, and uh, it'll yeah. be great. Do you? How do you feel about that when we see um, movies that kind of use science, like let's say? Uh, what was that one with Matthew McConaughey? Interstellar. Interstellar, Interstellar where it's like vaguely scientific, mm -hmm. but then the true answer is love yeah. or something. So Interstellar is one great example. It's uh, Kip Thorne's research on black holes. Mm -hmm. So it is very um, based on actual science. And the, you know he was doing the LIGO experiment, so they were dealing with gravitational waves and stuff like that at the moment. But it's all on his research on black holes. Mm -hmm. Even the graphic, the visual representations of black holes were very scientifically accurate. Um, but it's also a movie. How do you feel about you know the Star Wars expanded universe? I look um, at it as you being know, in a galaxy as a nerd. far, far away, <laughs> yeah. a long, long time ago. <laughs> so it's you can say that it's science magic. Though I, I wouldn't describe Star Wars as a true sci-fi. No, it's a but space the nerd fantasy. in you versus the fan. The nerd in you versus in you. the geek in you. Exactly. I know, okay. and it's just like which one? <laughs> I think they feed each other, and I think in that way, you know, science fiction can feed science exploration by means of public interest at the very least. Absolutely. Audience, what do you think we'll find about uh, other galaxies outside our own? Please let us know on Facebook and Twitter.